So this is my Mexican wave machine. We can use it to model the properties and behavior of waves. Remembering, of course, that waves, they transfer energy from one place to another, but the particles just oscillate about a fixed position. Now, I'd like to really concentrate on this figure down here. And what I can do is I can send a wave with quite a low frequency. And if we look at this figure, it takes them a long time to go through one complete cycle. Now, a cycle might be from the middle to the top back down again and back to the middle. And this cycle, uh, the time it takes for that really depends upon the frequency at which I'm causing this to oscillate. If I have something which oscillates a lot quicker, so I've got a higher frequency, we can actually see that the time it takes for one cycle of this figure here is a lot less. And there's a link between the time period and the frequency of a wave. But again, what we like to do in physics is draw graphs. So we're gonna draw a quick graph of the movement of this figure here over a certain amount of time. Now this graph here, we're just gonna be considering the movement of one particle in that wave, or in this case, one of the people on that Mexican wave. Now, again, we can look at their displacement measured in meters. So effectively that's how much they go up and down over time. But what we're gonna have along here rather than having distance like we had in that last uh, thing where we looked at the wavelength, what we're now going to be measuring along the bottom is our time in seconds. Okay. Now, effectively, at time zero, let's just say that this person is at the middle part of the wave. Well, a short amount of time later, they're going to have moved up slightly. So we can now think about them in the up position. So that's a short amount of time later. As time goes on, they're going to be moving down. And what we can start to do is we can look at the the progress of this person over time. Effectively, this is just a distance time graph that shows how that one particular person or one particular particle in a wave is moving. So what this is really showing is how one particle moves up and down and it just keeps going through this wave cycle. Now what we can tell from this graph then is the time it takes them to maybe go from their peak position down to the bottom and back up to their peak position. Again, they're time for one complete oscillation. And on the graph here, this is very much the distance from here to here. And this is what we call the wave period. It's the time period for one complete wave cycle. And again, we could measure from peak to peak, we could measure from the trough to trough of the wave, or we can measure from this point, again, to this point here, so the similar position on the next cycle. And this thing here is time period. It's a little bit awkward to write that. And the symbol that we use for time period, rather than just using a little t that we use to represent time, we use capital T to show that this is the time period for one complete oscillation. So let's have a look at that link between the time period and frequency of a wave. Now, if I set this sound to click every second, what I'm going to do is try and do one wave every second. So I'm going to go from this position over here and back again. So that's one complete wave cycle. So the time period for each of my hand waves is now one second. And that means I'm waving at a frequency of one hertz. So I'm doing one wave per second. So a time period of one, a frequency of one. If I wanted to increase the time period to two seconds a wave, so I go from here to here to here. Now it takes two seconds per wave, but I'm only actually doing half a wave per second. So I've got a frequency of 0 0.5 hertz. If I went the other way, say for example, I wanted to do a wave in half a second, I'd then be doing two waves per second. That's about as quick as I can go. So what we can see there, is that as the time period gets bigger, the frequency gets lower, or alternatively, as the frequency got higher, the time period would get lower. And the equation that we can use to calculate one from the other is that wave period, capital T, is equal to one divided by the frequency. Or equally, we could say that the frequency is equal to one divided by the time period. Remembering, of course, that we always measure our time period in seconds, and this then gives us the frequency in hertz. So that's really the link between the time period and frequency of a wave.